Good morning, beautiful artists. Today I have something fun. One of you was asking me about uh, drawing and painting these uh, lilies when the leaves fold over. So I did a drawing here, and as you know, or may not know if you're new to my channel and welcome, uh, I use guidelines and I use, um, you know, different techniques because my I can't just sit down and I'm not that type of draw. I can just sit down, see something and paint it. I mean, I'm sorry, draw it beautifully. So I like to use guidelines. I've been using this technique for years and years and I've done a lot of tutorials on these. I'll try to post for you in the description. Um, so that's what we're going to be drawing today. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a cough. Uh, so what we're going to do is, um, I've got my little super eraser. This thing is awesome, you guys. It lasts forever. I've already had this for a year and barely used any. You just keep pulling this string and more of the eraser is exposed. And it's a pretty tough little eraser. Uh, let me find my pencil here. I need some more of my black wing pencils. I've basically drawn so much, I pretty much used them all up. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to use my old trusty beat up pencil. Let's see here, let's use this. This is just a little Artisto, I think from Michael's pencil. Okay, so what I started out with here is I used my bowl, cause again, I can't draw a circle for the life of me. And I drew around the circle. So now I've got the diameter of my petals. <laughs> and then I drew these three little circles on the inside just for the center of my flower. And then the next thing I do is I create these guidelines. And these are where my petals are gonna come out. And why this is helpful is it makes sure all of my petals are facing back towards the center of my flower. So it just gives me a better way to get my petals aimed in the right direction. And by the way, I'm gonna be painting this as part two. This will be part one, just drawing this flower. And then part two will be painting it and I've just got a piece of my artisto pad paper here so I've got my um, guidelines in here now what I noticed with these lilies is the petal shapes are in a Y and an upside down Y so it's a series of three and three so what I'm gonna do first is draw this petal these two, and then this one, and then I'll go in and tuck in behind the other three petals in this Y, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with our Y here, and this is the shape, by the way, of the petals. I had a lily here, but it kind of died, and as I started using it to draw from, it was dropping the petals all over my paper. <laughs> my husband was like, you can't use a dead lily. So I'm doing this uh, kind of from remembering that. But the petals were skinny towards the bottom and then they branched out and didn't come quite to a point, a little bit of a curve. And then what I like to invite you to do is I like to make the edges of my petals a little bit organic looking so they're not perfect, just my thing. So let's go ahead with our two Y's. So like this, and then I'm going to come out and I'm just extending a little bit past my circle. And then we'll do the other one here, same thing. And I'm curving in if you can see that, okay? Because I'm gonna make a bend right there. And the other side. And here's the, the trick for that bend. I'm coming down. And there you go. Now I've got that little lip. And I'm drawing much 
darker for you guys. I wouldn't normally draw this dark. I'm actually going to go over this before I paint it with my little kneaded eraser and I'll roll over everything and lighten my uh, eraser marks. So we've got those two. Now let's do the bottom one. And this one, I'm just assuming it's kind of bending over, but we can't see it because we're looking at this lily from downwards, like face on. And now let's do uh, this one, the upside down Y. So we've got our guideline here going around. And again, I'm making mine kind of organic and I'm just going to erase that line. Sorry for any camera shake, guys. And I never wipe off with my hand because I always smear. I've always got oils on my hand. And then we'll do the two bottom Ys. And again, I'm creating this here. So I just extend this down here, draw the other side, and our little curl over. Last one, same thing. And curl it over. So we've got these fun little flaps, so to speak. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna erase my guidelines and erase my circle. Let's see, here we go. And the reason I'm not using my little black wing pencil, well, number one is because it's, I need to buy more of them. But uh, when I'm erasing a lot, I will use this eraser because it has the capacity to erase more than my other one. Just erase the circle I drew. Oh my goodness, I sure hope this camera isn't shaking too much, you guys. I know, I know, this year my goal is to learn to edit at least a little bit for you guys. And use my, this is just an old brush I think I've literally had for decades. It's by Robert Simmons. I don't even know if they're around anymore. It's loose, um, but it's a good eraser brush. And then let's erase this. You can be really rough with this eraser, by the way. Erase that. Now I'll have to blow off my desk. And let's just erase this circle, this circle, and there we go. I do have a little bit of smearing on here. That's okay. Erase this guideline. And there we go. Oops, I forgot a couple guidelines here. Let's get rid of those. Okay, feel better. A little bit cleaner here. There. So, we've got the outline of our lily. Now I'm gonna draw the inside. And actually, I originally drew this on this um, sketch pad I have. I, I can look for the uh, link for you. I bought it a while ago. I don't even know the brand, but I like it because it's a little bit bigger and it has a larger, um, larger sheets. And what I found with this sketch pad, got it upside down here, is, um, it's, they call it premium, and I found I can do really light washes of watercolor. So when I'm drawing, I can add on a little bit of paint, maybe just to play with some values, 
and it does pretty good there. Okay, so let's keep going here. I'm now going to draw in these little stamens. How do you like that, guys? Are you impressed? I remembered what these are called. which have the pollen for our fun little bees. And there we go, pretty perfect, right? I think these are great. The last thing I will add in here is some of the lines. which can help with viewing this and making it look correct and give you that feel. Oops, I did that one the wrong way. Let's get rid of that immediately. Did you see how that made, kind of went Ugh, icky. There we go. So now the next thing I want to do is when I create a drawing, before I'm going to paint, going to paint it, I will somewhat go through and do a little value sketch just to kind of give me an idea of where I'm going to put my dark and light. So this is my darkest and now I'm using up my pencil. Let me grab another pencil here. So there's my darkest value. Here's my medium. I think this is a really good exercise, or it is for me, so that I can a little bit lay out with some intention when I go to paint my flower. And this one is very light, my lightest. I can kind of lay out, okay, I know I'm gonna put maybe some shadow colors here. So this is medium, this is light. Okay, hopefully you can see that. This can maybe be a tiny bit darker. So this is gonna be maybe 80, 20 pigment to water. So maybe be 50, 50. And this will maybe be 20, 80, water to pigment. Oops, pigment to water. So that's kind of what I do. Now I'm gonna grab this one because I don't wanna color in too much on this because this is the one I'm gonna paint on. Uh, so what I did in is I went in first and I put in my darks, which is going to be the folds of the petals coming down. You could almost add one in there. Let's see. Let's use this pencil. Oh, just threw my pencil, guys. Hold on. Okay. Threw it across the room. So I go in and I just add in my dark values. And that way I know where I'm gonna put going to put them. Then I go in and I add in my medium values, which actually is in the base of the petals here. So that'll be more my medium. And then as I get to the outer edges, I would create a lighter medium like that. Now I'm gonna try and keep these white and use the color yellow um, just because I want to leave all this white space. So that's how I'm somewhat uh, drawing this out. So I go through and I do that. That way I have an intention. The other little fun thing I noticed is, this is so, this is the exciting part. So right before I did this video, Amazon came. So excited, you guys. I was like, ooh, this is perfect. And I ordered these little wax sticks. I've never used these before. Let me show you the packaging it came in. So it comes like a little box of crayons, but they're all wax sticks and they were pretty inexpensive. Uh, wax re resist sticks, clear crayon. And it's a 48 pack, which will probably last me a lifetime. 
But what I'm going to do, and this is such a great tip for leaving white space, is I'm going to, oop, see, look at that. I broke it because I pushed too hard. Is go in, and I'm just going to paint in these tiny little areas. And that way I don't have to worry about painting over them. So I think that's about the only place I want to do that. But how fun is that? This was the aha I talked about in the description is I was so excited because UPS dropped this off while I was setting up and I pulled them out, played with them for a minute and thought, oh my gosh, I got to use those. Those are great. Okay, so we've got our drawing. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my stem here, which mine, they were pretty, let me use my other pencil here. That one doesn't show up much. Um, thick. And down here. And then I noticed my leaves, the base of them, somewhat wrapped around my stem here. Like that. And I'm going to add a little bud, just because I think they're so cute. And a long, maybe baby leaf here, very flowy. Maybe add a little bend. And one more here. Okay, let's draw in our bud. go and a little green piece coming out maybe here too okay so we've got our uh, lily all drawn out I've put my wax resist crayon in here now because I'm doing this in a two-part series you shouldn't have any problem um, going in. You can use your masking. I'm not a big masking fan. It takes too long. I gotta wait for it to dry. And I feel like it kind of ruins the texture of the paper when I scrape it off. And sometimes it tears my paper. And honestly, it's probably because I don't take enough time and patience to, to um, do it appropriately. So that's why I don't use um, masking. Back to my value drawing, I added in my dark value over here and might go ahead and continue doing that. So do that however you would like to. I think I'll have darker values at the base of my bud. Darker values in here and kind of spreading out and getting lighter and lighter as I get to the tip. So there you go. I hope you give this a try. I can't wait to join you on part two. The other thing I'm going to show you is, so I'm going to be using this beautiful yellow color, but I think the other thing, because as you know, I can't resist my metallics, and I, I have to tell you, I'm getting obsessed with these MAB metallics. I literally, obsessed with them. I can't stop buying them. So I might be using some of this at gold. Let me just show you what it looks like. There's one, two, three, six of them in here. So this one is that one, and I'll put the colors. Ooh, we look at that, guys. I just got these, so these would have been perfect in the veins for that, um, blue ginkgo leaves I did. Hold on, let me grab a napkin here to wash and rinse my brush, dry it off. Uh, let's go on to the next one. What I notice about the MAB Metallics, with, aside from I love her, is um, typically what I found in her palettes is she'll give me some that are a little bit more opaque, and then there's some in there that are a little bit more transparent. And how I use those is I will typically mix those with 
my colors and it just gives them a nice shine. Now most of these are pretty opaque and beautiful as always. I'm never disappointed. So look at that. Oh, you guys, I'm serious. I just can't get enough of these. So we'll probably use one of these in our painting and I will show you the difference if I use them on white paper, because that, I think that's, you know, typically I'm painting on white paper. So let me just show you what they look like on white paper. Uh, let me get, hold on one second. Not a real big fan of this cheap paper I bought. It's okay. Okay, let's use this one. <laughs> so you can see the difference here. Oops, I just stuck my finger in that. So that's on black, this is on white. Kind of hard to see, I know, in the camera here. Uh, let's see. Then this one. So on white paper, these metallics are going to let the white paper come through a lot more. I think these are kind of hard to see in the... Um, In the camera here. So this one is quite opaque. I think actually, you guys, sorry about that. I think that's that one and that's that one. This is a little bit more translucent. Sorry about that. Um, that is this one. So look how translucent that is, which I, I like because what I'll do, like I said, is I'll just mix those with one of my colors. And then this one, I'm running out of paper here, is that. So this one is also a little translucent. Again, I don't mind that. And this one here, I'll put over to the side. Now that one has a little bit more opaqueness to it. And let me just show you this mixed with a pigment. Let's see here, let me open up. Let's see if we mix it. Well, let's mix it with this orangey red here. And I'm gonna kind of mix it on my paper. Ooh, let's see here. And see how pretty that is. Actually, let's use a red. I'm feeling red today. I use this one. These are my My Lang paints, by the way, as you know, I love. Okay, so I'm not going in with the tip of my brush notice. I'm loading the side of my brush. And let's just go in and use that. So here's our color. Now you could mix this in your palette, but I'm just doing this on the paper. Hope this is the right one here. Ooh, look at that. So pretty, right? Ah, oh, love it. So because it's gold, it gave it a little bit more of an orangey color, but look how beautiful. So there's on black and white paper, and I think on this, I might use some of these colors on there. So there you guys go. I have loaded this. It's in the post, so you can hopefully grab that. But um, I think if you try to draw it, I think you'll actually have better luck than you think on it. Um, if I can do this, you guys, you definitely can. I am not one of those artists that can just sit down and draw whatever I want. Those people amaze me. Um, that's not me. I need to make sense <coughs> out of it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, with my brain. Okay, so there you go. Can't wait to see you for part two, and happy drawing, everyone.